Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories, a short message for grown-ups. Bringing you Sleep Tight Stories takes us hundreds of hours each month. If you and your family enjoy our stories, please consider supporting us on Patreon with a monthly donation of your choosing between the cost of a cup of coffee and a nice sweet. Please visit us at patreon.com slash sleeptightstories. A link can also be found in our show notes. Thank you. Do you have a lamp in your room? I find it very cozy when I am reading to have a lamp on rather than the big light in the room. I can remember some of the lamps that I have read with, and I have great memories of curling up in different places beside a good lamp to read. This episode is all about an old street lamp. The Old Street Lamp It was a most respectable old lamp, which had seen many, many years of service, and now was to retire with a pension. It was this very evening, at its post, for the last time, giving light to the street. Its feelings were something like those of an old dancer at the theater, who is dancing for the last time, and knows that on the morrow, she will be in her room, alone and forgotten. The lamp had very great anxiety about the next day, for it knew that it had to appear for the first time at the town hall to be inspected by the mayor and the council, who were to decide whether it was fit for further service, whether it was good enough to be used to light the inhabitants of one of the suburbs or in the country at some factory. If the lamp could not be used for one of these purposes, it would be sent at once to an iron foundry to be melted down. In this latter case, it might be turned into anything, and it wondered very much whether it would then be able to remember that it had once been a street lamp. Whatever might happen, it seemed certain that the lamp would be separated from the watchman and his wife, whose family it looked upon as its own. The lamp had first been hung up on the very evening that the watchman, then a robust young man, had entered upon the duties of his office. Ah, well, it was a very long time since one became a lamp and the other a watchman. His wife had some little pride in those days. She condescended to glance at the lamp only when she passed by in the evening, never in the daytime. But in later years when all of them, the watchman, the wife, and the lamp, had grown old, she had attended to it, cleaning it and keeping it supplied with oil. The old people were thoroughly honest. They had never cheated the lamp of a single drop of the oil provided for it. This was the lamp's last night in the street, and tomorrow it must go to the town hall two very dark things to think of. No wonder it did not burn brightly. 
how many persons it had lighted on their way, and how much it had seen. As much, very likely, as the mayor and corporations themselves. None of these thoughts were uttered aloud, however, for the lamp was good and honorable and would not willingly do harm to anyone, especially to those in authority. As one thing after another was recalled to its mind, the light would flash up with sudden brightness. At such moments, the lamp had a conviction that it would be remembered. There was a handsome young man once, thought the lamp. It is certainly a long while ago, but I remember that he had a little note written on pink paper with a gold edge. The writing was elegant, evidently a lady's. Twice he read it through and kissed it, and then looked up at me with eyes that quite plainly said, I am the happiest of men. Only he and I know what was written on this, his first letter from his lady love. Ah, yes, And there was another pair of eyes that I remember. It is really wonderful how the thoughts jump from one thing to another. A funeral passed through the street. A young and beautiful woman lay on a bier decked of garlands with flowers and attended by torches, which quite overpowered my light. All along the street stood the people from the houses in crowds, ready to join the procession. But when the torches had passed from before me and I could look around, I saw one person standing alone, leaning against my post and weeping. Never shall I forget the sorrowful eyes that looked up at me. These and similar memories occupied the old street lamp on this, the last time that it would shine its light. The sentry, when he is relieved from his post, knows, at least, who will be his successor and may whisper a few words to him. But the lamp did not know its successor, or it might have given him a few hints respecting rain or mist and might have informed him how far the moon's rays would reach and from which side the wind generally blew, and so on. On the bridge over the canal stood three persons who wished to recommend themselves to the lamp, for they thought it could give the office to whomever it chose. The first was a herring's head, which could emit light in the darkness. He remarked that it would be a great saving of oil if they placed him on the lamppost. Number two was a piece of rotten wood, which also shines in the dark. He considered himself descended from an old stem, once the pride of the forest. The third was a glowworm, and how he found his way there, the lamp could not imagine. Yet there he was, and could really give light as well as the others. But the rotten wood and the herring's head declared most seriously by all they held sacred that the glowworm only gave light at certain times and must not be allowed to compete with them. The old lamp assured them that not one of them could give sufficient light to fill the position of a street lamp. But they would believe nothing that it said. When they discovered that it had not the power of naming its successor, they said they were very glad to hear it, for the old lamp was too old and worn out to make a proper choice. At this moment, the wind came rushing round the corner of the street and through the air holes of the old lamp. 
What is this I hear? it asked. Are you going away tomorrow? Is this evening the last time we shall meet? Then I must present you with a farewell gift. I will blow it into your brain so that in future, not only shall you be able to remember all that you have seen or heard in the past, but your light within shall be so bright that you will be able to understand all that is said or done in your presence. Oh, that is really a very, very great gift, said the old lamp. I thank you most heartily. I only hope I shall not be melted down. That is not likely to happen yet, said the wind. I will also blow a memory into you, so that, should you receive other similar presents, your old age will pass very pleasantly. That is, if I am not melted down, said the lamp, but should I in that case still retain my memory? Do be reasonable, old lamp, said the wind, puffing away. At this moment the moon burst forth from the clouds. What will you give the old lamp? asked the wind. I can give nothing, she replied. I am on the wane, and no lamps have ever given me light, while I have frequently shone upon them. With these words, the moon hid herself again behind the clouds, that she might be saved from further annoyances. Just then, a drop fell on the lamp from the roof of the house, but the drop explained that it was a gift from those gray clouds and perhaps the best of all gifts. I shall penetrate you so thoroughly, it said, that you will have the power of becoming rusty and, if you wish it, can crumble into dust in one night. But this seemed to the lamp a very shabby present, and the wind thought so too. Does no one give any more? Will no one give any more? shouted the breath of the wind as loud as it could. Then a bright falling star came down, leaving a broad, luminous streak behind it. What was that? cried the herring's head. Did not a star fall? I really believe it went into the lamp. Certainly. When such high-born personages try for the office, we may as well go home. And so they did, all three, while the old lamp threw a wonderfully strong light all around. This is a glorious gift, it said. The bright stars have always been a joy to me and have always shone more brilliantly than I ever could shine, though I have tried with my whole might. Now they have noticed me, a poor old lamp, and have sent me a gift that will enable me to clearly see everything that I remember, as if it still stood before me, and to let it be seen by all those who love me. And herein lies the truest happiness, for pleasures which we cannot share with others are only half enjoyed. That sentiment does you honor, said the wind, but for this purpose, wax lights will be necessary. If these are not lighted in you, your peculiar faculties will not benefit others in the least. The stars have not thought of this. They suppose that you and every other light must be a wax taper. But I must go down now. So it laid itself to rest. Wax tapers indeed, said the lamp. I have never yet had these, nor is it likely I ever shall if I could only be sure of not being melted down.
The next day, well, perhaps we had better pass over the next day. The evening had come, and the lamp was resting in a grandfather's chair. And guess where? Why, at the old watchman's house. He had begged as a favor that the mayor and corporation would allow him to keep the street lamp in consideration of his long and faithful service. As he had himself hung it up and lighted it on the day he first commenced his duties, four and twenty years ago. He looked upon it almost as his own child. He had no children, so the lamp was given to him. There lay the lamp in the great armchair near the warm stove. It seemed almost to have grown larger, for it appeared quite to fill the chair. The old people sat at their supper, casting friendly glances at it, and would willingly have admitted it to a place at the table. It is quite true that they dwelt in a cellar two yards below ground and had to cross a stone passage to get to their room. But within, it was warm and comfortable, and strips of list had been nailed round the door. The bed and the little window had curtains, and everything looked clean and neat. On the window seat stood two curious flower pots, which a sailor named Christian had brought from the East or West Indies. They were of clay and in the form of two elephants with open backs. They were filled with earth, and through the open space, flowers bloomed. In one grew some very fine chives or leeks, This was the kitchen garden. The other, which contained a beautiful geranium, they called their flower garden. On the wall hung a large colored print representing the Congress of Vienna and all the kings and emperors. A clock with heavy weights hung on the wall and went tick, tick, tick. Steadily enough, yet it was always rather too fast, which, however, the old people said was better than being too slow. They were now eating their supper, while the old street lamp, as we have heard, lay in the grandfather's armchair near the stove. It seemed to the lamp as if the whole world had turned round. But after a while, the old watchman looked at the lamp and spoke of what they had both gone through together, in rain and in fog, during the short, bright nights of summer or in the long winter nights, through the drifting snowstorms when he longed to be at home in the cellar. Then the lamp felt that all was well again. It saw everything that had happened quite clearly as if the events were passing before it. Surely the wind had given it an excellent gift. The old people were very active and industrious. They were never idle for even a single hour. On Sunday afternoons, they would bring out some books, generally a book of travels, which they greatly liked. The old man would read aloud about Africa with its great forests and the wild elephants, while his wife would listen attentively, stealing a glance now and then at the clay elephants, which served as flower pots. I can almost imagine I am seeing it all, she said. Ah, how the lamp wished for a wax taper to be lighted in it for then the old woman would have seen the smallest detail as clearly as it did itself. The lofty trees with their thickly entwined branches and whole herds of elephants treading down bamboo thickets with their broad, heavy feet. 
What is the use of all my capabilities, sighed the old lamp, when I cannot obtain any wax lights? They have only oil and tallow here, and these will not do. One day, a great heap of wax candle ends found their way into the cellar. The larger pieces were burned, and the smaller ones the old woman kept for waxing her thread. So there were now candles enough, but it never occurred to anyone to put a little piece in the lamp. Here I am now with my rare power, sought the lamp. I have faculties within me, but I cannot share them. They do not know that I could cover these white walls with beautiful tapestry, or change them into noble forests, or indeed, to anything else they might wish. The lamp, however, was always kept clean and shining in a corner where it attracted all eyes. Strangers looked upon it as lumber, but the old people did not care for that. They loved it. One day, it was the watchman's birthday. The old woman approached the lamp, smiling to herself, and said, I will have an illumination today in honor of my old man. The lamp rattled in its metal frame, for it thought, Now at last I shall have a light within me. But after all, no wax light was placed in the lamp. Only oil, as usual. The lamp burned through the whole evening and began to perceive too clearly that the gift of the stars would remain a hidden treasure all its life. Then it had a dream, for to one with its faculties dreaming was not difficult. It dreamed that the old people were gone and that it had been taken to the iron foundry to be melted down. This caused the lamp quite as much anxiety as on the day when it had been called upon to appear before the mayor and the council at the town hall. But though it had been endowed with the power of falling into decay from rust when it pleased, it did not make use of this power. It was therefore put into the melting furnace and changed into an elegant iron candlestick, as elegant as you could wish to see, one intended to hold a wax taper. Candlestick was in the form of an angel holding a nosegay, in the center of which the wax taper was to be placed. It was to stand on a green writing table in a very pleasant room where there were many books scattered about and splendid paintings on the walls. The owner of the room was a poet and a man of intellect. Everything he thought or wrote was pictured around him. Nature showed herself to him sometimes in the dark forests, sometimes in cheerful meadows where the storks were strutting about, or on the deck of a ship sailing across the foaming sea with the clear blue sky above or at night in the glittering stars. What powers I possess, said the lamp, awakening from its dream. I could almost wish to be melted down. But no, that must not be while the old people live. They love me for myself alone. They keep me bright and supply me with oil. I am as well off as the picture of the Congress, in which they take so much pleasure. And from that time, it felt at rest in itself. And not more so than such an honorable old lamp really deserved to be.
And that is the end of this episode. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>